Hello and welcome to a modern stream. Today we're going to be doing a social experiment. We're going to be playing Belcher. I have no idea. I haven't read anything about this deck. I haven't practiced with this deck. The idea was to just come in cold and try to see what we can make happen. Uh, this is, of course, a, a donation deck, so thank you so much for, for the dono, thank you for supporting the stream. And if you would like me to play your nonsense decks or your good decks, you can also uh, make, a, make a donation to help support the stream and for me to play any deck list of your choice uh, on, on stream over here. Also making YouTube channels as well, if that's something that you would prefer. Uh, now, getting that out of the way, we're going to be playing some Belcher. This is, uh, of course, the People's Cannon. This is the People's Cannon. This is a one-card combo. You put Belcher into play. You pay three, and your opponent is dead. That's that's it. That's what it. That's what it does. So um, this deck is prepared to do a bunch of things that end with a Belcher being in play, and then your opponent being dead. We can have a bunch of fast mana thanks to Desperate Ritual, Pyretic Ritual. We have uh, all of those rituals there. We also have access to Mana Morphos. We have some other ramp in the form of Strike It Rich. Uh, this is some uh, some slower ramp that kind of sets up future turns, which can be uh, pretty interesting. And then there's the combo of Infernal Plunge plus Pact of the Titan, so you can put a Pact of the a Token 4-4 four, four into play, and then you have actual Dark Ritual, it's legally modern in case you didn't know, sacrifice a creature and you add red, red, red for a single mana. We also have Pact of Negation to play around counter magic, and the secret for this deck, obviously, is the fact that we can have lands without really having lands, so... We have access to all of the uh, lands from Sendikar Rising. So that is Shadow School Smashing, Valakut Awakening, and Spikefield Hazard as our red sources. And then we have some green sources in Turn Timber Symbiosis and Balaget Recovery. And some uh, colorless sources in Emeria Skull and uh, Seagate Restoration. I'm slightly interested in, re in figuring out why we have two Seagate Restorations since we're basically never ever paying for Pact of Negation, but maybe there's some very, very, very corner cases in which you really want the 3-2 to, to block with, and Emeria Skull helps you get cast the 3-2, but doesn't really help you pay for Pact, I guess. Um, I don't know. Again, I have no idea about this deck, so uh, I just received the deck list and I copied and pasted it. Um, of course, Iron Crag Iron Crag Feet. It's for four mana. It gives you seven mana, which very conveniently is what uh, playing Child Bircher and activating it uh, does. So that is another way that we can uh, go about winning the game on a, a very very easy and single swoop. We also have a Recross the Paths uh, for two and a green. You basically get to stack your deck. So uh, by doing that, you can uh, you can uh, set up kills using Reforge the Soul, where you set up the perfect seven, and then you miracle them, you wheel, and then um, you just kill them on the following turn. This is also a fairly strong Blood Moon deck. You have multiple avenues for putting a Blood Moon into play on turn two. And Blood Moon, as we have talked multiple times in uh, in Mistress Wobble in the past uh, week, and definitely in the week previous, and you can, of course, check out the new episode that went out yesterday, by the way. Um, and Blood Moon... It's just very, very well positioned right now. Uh, Prime, uh, Primeval Titan decks are seeing a pretty strong resurgence, mostly of the Amulet variety, but we also have the Creativity uh, Titan decks that are seeing some play. And it just lines up very well against uh, a, wider, a wider range of decks, including the four color uh, Omnath decks and stuff like that. So Blood Moon, uh, pretty strong right now. And this is probably one of the strongest, if not the actual strongest Blood Moon shell. When everybody's trying to out mid range each other, uh, being able to go under those mid range decks uh, is a very, very real, uh, it's a very real possibility. And we have seen a resurgence in Vulture in the past uh, weeks because of this. Uh, you will see a very, very lonesome and mysterious Pyromancer Ascension here. Uh, this card is uh, here for a weird reason, so what you're trying to do, and this is something that I got from Spider, um, like that's how he explained it to me, I've never seen this actually executed, because it seems incredibly, incredibly time consuming and just straight up annoying to, to do, uh, but what you want to do is you can set up situations if your opponent like by the needles your belcher or something like that, uh, you can set up situations where you can enable Pyromancer's Ascension 
by just, you know, playing any spell twice. And then you can net mana thanks to Mana Morphose, Pyretic Reach Rule and stuff like that. You make a bunch of mana. And then what you do is uh, you start drawing cards with Metamorphose, you use Valagate Recovery to get back your Metamorphose, keep drawing cards, and then eventually what you do is you start casting Spikefield Hazard a bunch, and then you start looping your Valagate Recoveries. So like you put a Valagate re Recovery on the stack, and then it gets copied, and then one of the copies gets another Valagate Recovery, and the other copy gets a Spikefield Hazard, and then you just literally get to pin your opponent to death, or alternatively, Alternatively, you can make a bunch of uh, Pact of the Titans uh, tokens, and then you use the single Song Mad Treachery in order to uh, give all of them haste and attack in a single turn. So, extremely convoluted way to kill your opponent, uh, but it's there for those situations where our opponent has an answer to the Belcher. Um, so that was a lot of talking just about the main deck. Uh, fortunately, the sideboard is fairly simple. If your opponent is going to use discard spells and stuff like that against you, you just get a ley line. If your opponent is going to have counter magic against you, you get a pact of negation. If they're going to have counter spells and discard spells, you have Veil of Summer. Your opponent is going to have Piting Needles and stuff like that, you got Force of Vigor. And this is pretty nice because we have access to Kahira as a companion, which is a free card. And then we can use this Kahira to pitch to the Force of Vigor. So we're always going to have something to pitch to, to the to the force, which is very nice. Uh, we also have a nature's claim for when our opponent is doing that kind of, uh, you know, artifact enchantment slash nonsense. And um, finally, if your opponent has creatures, fury, you kill those creatures, you kill them. So that is the deck that we're going to be playing. Um, I am ready to stumble a lot. I am basically... I had to go through a very uh, steep uh, psychological preparation before this league. So we're going to see if we make it through. Uh, if you do enjoy the struggle, make sure you hit that uh, like and subscribe button. And I will see you for round number one. All right, we have revealed Kahira. This is a turn to Blood Moon. Sure, let's do it. We can reset our hand with Valakut Awakening if Bloodman turns out to not be good enough. Uh, but like as I was saying, like Bloodman is very good against the vast majority of the format. So I'm going to keep this hand, assuming that Bloodman is going to be good. And let's see where it goes. My opponent is going to go turn one monkey and I'm going to be very, very sad though. Eventually we'll find we'll find something, right? Mono White Hammer, yeah, we're gonna hope that that's not the case. Uh, well, that's okay. The <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. So we drew the recross the paths, so we can set up a kill for next turn. But if we blood moon on turn two. <laughs> We lock ourselves of casting every cross the path. God damn it. Um <laughs> So also like the blood moon can't be that good, right? It can't really be that good when when my opponent we know it's going to have access to at least one basic. The opponent won't fetch in response, they're totally f 6 Let's go to second main phase. Oh, opponent is actually f 6 Um, They're probably going to cut, cut the F6 though. Gunthor, thank you for the prime sub. Welcome to the prime time stronghold. First time sub. Appreciate the support. Um... Yeah, I'm not gonna go for it. I'm not gonna go for it. Let's see what they do. I mean, it's 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 the fact that we drew the recross, right? If we hadn't drawn the recross, then we would have very easily just ignore this, and now we're gonna get super punished. Brutal.
I assume that they're just going to they're gonna take the Blood Moon here. Because if they are indeed playing Reanimator, then um if they are playing Reanimator, then they can just uh, Teferi, right? I think okay to come. Do you need help? Is this a cry for help? No, this is actually the opposite steps. I got paid to do this. Y you know about this, right? Y you know that I will I will play anything on stream for money, so. You of all people know this. <laughs> Fun fact, Beltra is next to Storm and only a handful of other decks where your opponents will actually F6 during paper gameplay as well. You can tell your opponent opponent is F6 on your turn when their eyes glaze over and they stop reacting to your game actions. Yeah, people really mentally check out. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. You see, you get it. Even Nierbrand, yeah, the price the price for Nierbrand is a, different, a little bit different. You want to know how much money it would be for me to play Nierbrand? Well, there you go. Wait, what? Even the next Ash Brew that either 05s or 50s, even more for the Ash Brews. I'm I'm all about the Ash Brews. That's the life that I want to live. You know what I'm saying? So, so I guess now I have to Blood Moon, right? Because now we know that my opponent is playing a counter spell deck, and if my opponent is playing we suspect that my opponent is playing a Teferi deck, and since we suspect they're playing a Teferi deck, then um, the Recross the Path Kill doesn't actually work with a Teferi in play, because they just... Um, wait. Oh, they have another Disc Reserve for the Moon? Wait, what? Oh, my opponent's playing Fawn deck. My opponent is out there having fun. Uh, I think the paths are about to get recrossed. So my opponent allow themselves to get blood mooned. Bolting myself here doesn't change the Tassigor clock. I think I'm gonna Blood Moon. I'm gonna ignore the recross the path now. Very little fucks were given. Yeah, my opponent's just like, yeah, whatever. I could play around, and they also just like they had a delta, right? So they're like, I could play around Blood Moon. I just don't want to, you know. <laughs> Just like, I don't think I don't think you have the balls to play a blood moon. I'm like, eh, I mean, I don't know. So can we draw a Belcherino now? If we draw a Belcherino, we probably just win, right? That's a ritual. Uh, so, I mean, I have Belcher and Activation Mana right here, so. So I guess we have three turns to draw it. That's more mana. I still think it's correct for me to Moon there, even though it locks me out, because uh, my this is the nice counterspell from my opponent, right? Yeah, Mana Morphos or Strike It Rich would also be uh, game-winning draws. That's not the one. Alright, last draw. Now recross the path, no longer no longer a path to victory. <laughs> um, again, I, I do stand by my play. I do stand by my play, for sure. I think it was the correct line. Womp womp.
We're going to go out my way. We're going to go out my way. Yeah, unfortunate. All right. Um, Esper, um, sorry. Uh, that's bug mid range, I guess. Do want the Veil of Summers. I think I do want the Blood Moons. Probably want the Belches. I think we're going to cut the Iron, iron Clock feats. I don't think I want Ley Lines. I think I'd rather have Veil than Ley Line. Do I play around Pithy Needle? Probably not. One pack's probably okay. Get claim to gate a pile. Uh, is claim better than force? Because this costs no mana, right? So I assume like the single tone copy of force is okay. Claim is a 1x for piles. Okay. Force is a real cyber card. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, okay, so what do we want to do here? Definitely want Blood Moons, particularly on the play. Um, these cards are never to be cut, I assume. So we have two cards to cut. Any ideas of what we want to do here? Is there anything that we want to trim? With infinite combo, I don't need to respect needle. Yeah, but then grave hate gets me, but there's no way my opponent plays any grave hate, right? They could play surgical though. They could play surgical. If we're afraid of counters, we can cut part of the Titan and plunge. Isn't that like one of the... So we can... Like, iron these two only for um, for reforge piles. Maybe we can cut one of the reforges, I guess. Um, I'm going to cut one of these lands. No idea what I'm doing. That's a Belcher with some lands. How quickly does this hand kill? So turn one, turn two. It's three mana, turn four, play a Belcher, go from there. Really want to find a Veil. That's probably one of my best draws here. Oops. Play that. Imagine we're gonna see some discard here. <laughs> I wonder if my opponent takes my land. It's probably not good for them. They should just take the Belcher. I'm gonna draw another one. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Easily drawing another Belcher. Easily droid another Belcher. They take my land. Told ya. Play that. One mana short of just... Just casting the Belcher right there. Imagine my opponent thinking that we're not gonna draw land there. <laughs> Just, who do they think they're playing against, right? Do they really think that I'm not going to find the land? Like, is that really something that they, they think it's possible? 
Who do they think I am, right? Uh, it's Morphos. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. One mana short. Am I really one mana short right now? Oh, we splice! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yep. Woo! Woo! Look at look at us go! <laughs> look at us go! Is this good enough? Are we are we good here? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Any order will do. You are at minus 32, opponent. Easy. Easiest game I've ever played in my life. Never, never, ever have I played an easier game in my entire life. <laughs> I'm enjoying this too much. Yeah, because so far it's easy. So far it's easy, so it's no big deal, but... Um, so I think on the draw I'm gonna do something like this. My opponent seems really weak to... My opponent seems really, really weak to Blood Moon, though. Like, unreasonably weak to Blood Moon. This is the fast mana counting we're here for. Glad I'm able to deliver. Please don't fire over. I don't want to see this deck any more than I have to. <laughs> uh, I really doubt that we will 5-0. I really doubt it. Um, so this is a recross hand. Sure. <laughs> Imagine Mulligan in, right? This is a turn three kill, right? With recross the path. So maybe this means I take it a little bit slower. I'm gonna play that though. What are you grave? What do you got, OP? Keep a card on top. Luck sack. An absolute luck sack. Another Valakut Awakening. Am I supposed to just shock with this Emerius call? So I can Morphos into... Into Veil? No, no way, right? Just play another Awakening and say go. Red Waste, we, we had uh, one of the green... The green sources, but... Never, ever, <laughs> never, ever will my opponent respect Blood Moon, you know what I'm saying? Oh no! They're playing Field of Ruin? How can they play Field of Ruin? Jeez! Uh, can't ever beat this card. Can I veil the field? And more the ego. Well, I guess I was supposed to do this, huh? <laughs> uh, I guess I actually was supposed to do this. All right, we're gonna have to settle in. 
and we're gonna have to set up the uh, the Phyrexian yeah we're gonna have to set up the other kill which is going to be something the good thing is that we have 20 minutes to set it up right so at least we got time right if anything we got time Too late. So they're just gonna feel that now. Still, still not out of this game. Still not out of this game. Nether Morphos. Play this. Say yes. Oh, I guess that we can't set up the Ascension kill until they use that Field of Ruin. Just, they can just make me shuffle. Oh, I can recross and win the clash. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. The problem is, is if I do that, then I can't... Um... <laughs> oh, you love to see it. <laughs> wow. The junk... The jank is strong with my opponent. <laughs> I mean, this is basically death, right, shaman? Right? This is basically death, right, shaman? So maybe I should have should have I just awakening there. It's possible that I should have awakened there. I'm gonna wait one more turn. Because next turn I'm gonna be able to recross and then hold that veil thanks to double metamorphose. No, I think we're recrossing next turn. A goif. That's a land. All right. So we're going to be able to safely recross here. Turn timber? Oh. Well, I probably don't want to do that with my opponent having, having only one card left in hand, right? So let's morphose here. Whoops. Tapped my mana wrong. Green, green. It doesn't do anything. So, no, not that one, uh, this one. Gotta play that, say yes. Okay, so we're going to be dead the following turn. So this is the last turn that we can do something here. We can raid Blood Moon. Yeah, I guess our mana is going is going to the garbage, right? So that's probably fine. 
And it's not like Thoughtseize really does anything. So turn timber goes first. This this ensures that we win the clash. Then we want to draw reforge the soul, right? So then we click reforge the soul. Then we're gonna want our one of ascension. Our one of ascension. Because it's our only win condition. We're gonna want both mana morphoses, right? Plunge and pact for mana. So this is ascension, plunge, pact. Ascension, plunge, pact. We want Balagate recovery, right? Another turn timber. Turn timber and, re and um, Balagate recovery, turn timber. And then two rituals. Is that correct? We effectively get to st uh, stack the top nine since I draw two from Metamorphos. Good point. So I want more rituals then? But I'm gonna have I'm gonna have five mana to begin with. I'm but I'm gonna be using two to cast the reforge. So I'm gonna have three mana to work with. Yeah, just more rituals, right? So I'm just gonna put like two desperate rituals there. So, Morphos, Ritual, Ritual, Morphos, Turn Timber, Recovery, Recovery. And then just like more rituals, right? So, Spike Field Hazard, Veil of Summer, more rituals, I guess. Whoops, that was a mistake. Hopefully it doesn't matter. I guess Pact would have been better than Veil there. Okay, so hopefully this works out. Hopefully this works out. That's like whatever. We're gonna put that on the bottom. Opponent reveals a Goifo, which I assume they're gonna put on the bottom because it doesn't really speed up their clock. Uh, actually, it does. Actually, it does speed up their clock. So they kept it on top. And now we're just going to ritual, play a moon.
food token, very important. Think about the follow, hate Spain. All right, buckle up, kids. Buckle up. Buckle up. Because this is gonna be this is gonna be a trip. <laughs> this is gonna be a trip. Yes, I would like to pay and cast Reforge the Soul for its miracle cost. Here's a draw seven. Force of negation. Yeah, but then I draw the ascension, right? I didn't think about this. Then I draw the ascension and I discard it to reforge the soul. I actually didn't think about this. I should have thought about this before. I wouldn't have had enough mana anyways, right? No, I just don't have the mana to work with if I do that. Because this is draw step. So I'm using two mana to cycle Morphos. Using two mana to cycle here and filter and make my mana. So then when I go to my turn... We have a turn timber in the list, in the thing anyway. I should have put the turn timber first. Yeah, that's what should have happened. If I had put the turn timber first, I think we would have been in okay shape. So what I had to do was I had to put the turn timber first, then everything else. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it, right? Like it's not like I'm. Like, I'm, I'm not using anything, you know? So now, play turn timber. But the plunge is gone. I'm just taking lethal. That's the problem. So I'm still not dead in the water like but i i'm just taking lethal this turn so that's the issue but i think this game was winnable if i had put the if i had put this turn timber on the top i think this game was actually just winnable <laughs> we can make a 4-4 that's true the problem is, like, we jump block and we still lose next turn, right? So I'm gonna ritual into Morphos into recovery, get back my ascension. Pass the turn. We're going to Pact of the Titan, block the Goif. We untap, pay for the Pact. And we just don't have enough mana to go off, unfortunately. I draw from Metamorphos and Bale, so I need two cards at the top. 
Yeah, but that's that's just fine, right? We we put two cards instead. It's it's fine. So I had to I had to like figure out what my turn was gonna look like before I even did anything. All right. So we're that here. Uh, that's interesting to note, though, right? Like if we if I had actually sequenced properly, and I had played around my opponent having a counter spell, the issue is that if I play around them having the counter spell then I may not be able to actually kill them, <laughs> which is which is a fun spot to be in, you know? Anyway, interesting first match. Uh, I think my opponent's deck was very bad. I, I think that I tried doing this, it is just not good enough in the format, unfortunately. Anyway, see you next round. All right, what do we got here for the second round? Um, this is my land. Uh, this hand seems bad, right? We can't even turn to Blood Moon. Ship it. This hand seems a lot better. Uh, we we need a red source, but like we have both Recross and Belcher against the Lurus deck, so I think this is fine. Probably keeping this. I think I want to keep Strike the Rich. I could also assume that my opponent is on hammer. If my opponent is on hammer, then I want to bottom their recross. But if I'm assuming that they're playing like some sort of discard spell deck, yeah, I think Strike It Rich is what's gonna go. Again, unless we know exactly that my opponent is on hammer. If my opponent, okay, so they're not on hammer, cool. That's a monkey. Red source. <laughs> All right. I mean, if they cast it, it goes to my graveyard, then I can flush it back. So that's value. I'm not excited about getting Torak, though, let me tell you. Not excited at all about getting Torak here. Still no red source. Still no red source. But now if we do find a red source, we win immediately. And next turn we can also call. <laughs> please? <laughs> Pretty please? Klepta monkey's gonna make them rich. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Do you wanna cast the Blood Moon opponent? Play a DRC. Red source. So the reason I'm tanking here is that we can just cast a recross here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The problem with recross is that we still don't have a red source. <laughs> so we can't we can't cast uh, the fucking uh, what's his name because we don't have a red source. I can put a top red and then the pile. 
Yes, but I can't draw that on top red, and then I'm dead. If if this if they achieve delirium, I'm dead on the following turn. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. I'm, I'm gonna put a metamorphose first, so the monkey steals the morphos. I think I have to play this, as awkward as it seems. I think as awkward as it seems, uh, I have to do this. The fact that I haven't drawn a red source just yet is what, what puts me in this very awkward scenario. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, like my opponent, because this is 8 damage, right, and I'm at 15, so I'm, I'm just, I'm actually just dead next turn, so I can't set things up in a better way. Opponents playing dress down though, but they don't seem to be playing uh what's his name? I guess maybe they are playing shadow, I don't know. Yeah, this curse spell here is Oh, Inquisition doesn't do anything. No, Inquisition takes the ritual. Which is the way that I fix my mana for the feet. So I'm assuming that this means that we die unless we find another ritual. Man, this is this was such an awkward draw. Yeah, I think we're dead too. That was such an awkward draw. Yep, yeah, they do take the ritual. We still don't know what my opponent saw. We don't know if they're playing Shadow or they're not playing Shadow. We're dead, right? Sadness, true sadness. Uh, okay, so I definitely want veils. Now the question is, do I also want ley lines? And do I want Pacts? So these are probably a must, because it answers both their discard spells and their this their counter magic. But these are maybes, because these are only good against their discard spells, and these are only good against their counter magic. Yeah, I can see this going out just kind of as a given. And this coming in just as a given. Bloodman looks like a trap. I'm inclined to agree there. So with Blood Moon going, maybe we can bring in Ley Lines. I just hate this card so much. I guess we go with this. Hey, this sounds very good. Keep it. Whee! Easiest ley line of my life. Uh, so I'm pro I'm protected from from discard assets. So this is only gonna counter um, counter magic. So because of that, I think I want to do this. And now we want to play Balagev. Play that, say go. Opponent's pretty desperate over there. This ley line's doing some serious work. 
We are not playing main deck Fury, no. So they tapped out. Do I just do this? I think so, right? Okay, now we're going to play around counter magic. So whatever I put on top is going to be a card that I'm okay drawn with Veil of Summer and that I'm also going to be okay um, discarding, okay? So... That's just Prime. Thank you, Prime. Uh, Pri that's just Prime for the Prime Time sub. The Prime sub. Welcome to the Prime Time stronghold. So much Prime. So much Prime. I uh, appreciate it. Um, think this deck needs to land? Yes, bro. It's possible. So, uh, we definitely want to put Turn Timber first. So first, there goes the Turn Timber. Now we want to put... Now we put the Reforge, right? We put the Reforge now... And after the Reforge, that's where, yeah, that's where we put the random card that we don't want. So turn Timber, Reforge, Shatter School Smashing, for example, right? So we're going to have Reforge first, then the Shatter School Smashing. Yeah, exactly. And then something else. We're going to have Veil of Summer as well. So then we're going to throw a Shatter School Smashing in there. Then Pact of Negation. Right? So this um, Reforge, Shatter School Smashing, Pact of Negation. Pact of the Titan, um, the other thing, uh, Infernal Plunge. We're still one minute short. Oh, Veil to start the turn is interesting. Man, like, <laughs> these piles are insane. So, we have reforged the soul. We put Shatter Skull Smashing on top of that. Then we want... This is where we're at right now. now then we have Pact of Negation. Pact of the Titan. Um, Infernal Plunge. Iron Clock Feet. Desperate Ritual. Belcher. Is that correct? And if they dash Monkey, we lose? Well, I could have put another Reforge the Soul in order to play around Dashed Monkey, right? But I didn't play around Dashed Monkey now. Can I undo? I don't think I can undo. No, I can't undo. Once once I clicked on something. So I already have like Reforge into, into Shatter Skull Smashing. Those are my top two cards. So my opponent has Dashed Monkey. I guess I should have thought about Dashed Monkey before I got into, into this stream of consciousness. Uh, but okay, now that we did, we have... Uh, the, the thingy, right? So, uh, Reforge the Soul, 
and then we have um, Pact of Negation, Pact of the Titan, Infernal Plunge, Iron Crack Feet, um, Belcher, Pyretic Ritual, Pyretic Ritual? Or something. And after that, every cross the path in case things fail, right? And we can attempt to go off again. And then after that, it doesn't matter. Let's let's throw a veil in there for good measure. And then the rest doesn't matter. And I put that on the bottom. Uh oh, monkey. Uh, monkey has entered. The has entered the revealed card soon, so I'm assuming that we're dead. <laughs> oh, I don't need an Elric Cross, that's true. Yeah, I don't need an Elric Cross. Whoops. Well, Dash Monkey is going to destroy us here, so... Wait, they didn't Dash Monkey? So I think I start the turn by veiling. So we're gonna say yes to this. Yes. We're gonna veil first. You know, they're fetching and shocking, so. So, Shatter School Smashing, play this, yes, Pact of the Titan. Inferno Plunge. Pyretic Ritual, Iron Feet, Golden Char Belcher, Belch you, Woo! Good job, Twitch chat. Good job, Twitch chat. Good job. Okay, <laughs> what are we doing now? Um, I guess Pact of Negation is kind of bad, right? Pact of Negation is kind of bad unless we draw it naturally. Fury looks acceptable. I'm not going for acceptable, though. I'm looking for good. I think I'm going to submit the same. Desoli, thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. Two for one in my, myself to kill a monkey. That's not the life that I'm about, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I probably have to ship this. Probably gotta ship this. No ley line, unlucky. I mean, this hand is just like a bunch of lands, a belcher. 
and that's it. I think I'm going to five. Okay. Keep that bottom, bottom. You would have kept the six. Yeah, I think it's close. That's a monkey. Turn one, turn timber, shock, go. <laughs> Not suspicious at all. Don't mind me, opponent. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just shocking for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just you know, throwing a lightning ball at my face because I just felt like it. You know what I'm, oh, misclick. <laughs> I should say that in, <laughs> say that in the chat. Oops, misclick. Morphos down. Runcor, thank you for the follow. So next turn. This coming turn, I can recross with Veil back up. I'm told amulets and dinosaur play on this channel. If you hang out for long enough, what the legend says may be true. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do, this may be a little five head, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, oh, we don't have fury. Ah, oh, damn it. Because what I was thinking is, we can do a recross pile and then if my opponent attacks they're gonna exile my fury which doesn't do anything if they try to game us and they don't attack so that we draw a blank card we draw that fury and then we play the fury and we kill both of their things but we don't have fury so whoever <laughs> whoever suggested bringing in fury damn it <laughs> you were right <laughs> You were very, very right. Um, can you play some Summerlin before the playlist goes? Uh, I could. Maybe I'll do that for for something else. Maybe I'll do that for, um, like for ice. Maybe maybe I'll just do it on the end of the stream. See what's up. Oh, did you just fuck this up? I had to ritual first. Yeah, I fucked this up. Damn it. <laughs> Chad, why would you tell me to start with Metamorphos when I had to start with Desperate Ritual and not Metamorphos? Uh, well, that really sucks. Because I already shocked and I already played the thing. Ugh, all right, I'm just going to recross with no veil back up. This is bad. This is really bad. So, we want to do turn teamer first. Oh, I guess what I was saying that we wanted to do with Fury, we can do that with Shadow Skull Smashing, can't we? Yes, we can. So, we're going to go Shadow Skull Smashing first. Then Reforge the Soul. And now, we go for our pile. And our pile is going to include...
yeah, we only have one reforge. That's why we have to kind of turn over backwards in order to in order to make it work. Because monkey be monkey, <laughs> monkey be monkey. Um, we need to put mana. Yeah, obviously we need to put mana. So we're gonna throw a shadow scroll smashing in there, which is on top red. Then I'm just gonna do the same pile that I did before. So plunge. Feet, Belcher, Ritual, Ritual. Does Veil do anything for me? No, because we're going to Veil in response to the trigger, so Veil doesn't really do anything. I guess it does, but I don't have the mana to cast the Veil, so it doesn't do anything, never mind. Um, so we're just going to just put more mana in there. Veil and like whatever. Put down the bottom. Blood Crypt has entered the exiled cards. Pass the turn. If you're the opponent, I'd be tempted to not attack with. Yeah, I set up for that. So if they go for not attack with Ragavan, I have a Shadow School Smashing on top of my deck. So I can just cast the Smashing and kill the monkey. Yep, so opponent goes for that line. Very smart. I guess the only problem now is if they do counter the Shatter Skull Smashing, we may be in trouble. So I guess we lose to a counter spell on Shatter Skull Smashing. Um, so I guess that we can Veil now, so we don't draw a card. Yeah, I'm just gonna Ritual. And we go all in next turn. Oh, the Pact of the Titan is here! No, I still- I, no, 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 th no, this, this is fine, this is fine. I, I put two Rituals in there, so it, this is fine. Oh, I can back this out, that's very smart. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that's great, that's great. That's fantastic, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so now we do this. Desperate Ritual. And now we're gonna Shatter Skull. Kill that thing. Your go. The only problem now is we don't have Veil anymore, so we cannot, um, we cannot protect our thingy. So that's the... Problem. It kind of is what it is. It kind of is what it is. Well, that to Lightning Bolt. But I think this game was... Okay, I feel like I'm getting a hang of this. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a hang of this. Also, if I were my opponent, I would have kept that dress down because that was an, a free surveil, right? Unless they're unless they're using their mana, they can look for another bolt. They don't have enough to lure us into that Shragaman. So Call Against Command would be a beating. Call Against Command is a beating. Um I think we lose to counterspell as well. I think we do lose to counterspell. We obviously do lose to Lightning Bolt, because we're just dead to it. Um Okay, so that's that's probably lethal. Because they're just going to dash monkey and they're going to steal my thing. All right, that's brutal. Okay, that's uh, that's good enough for me. Um, this matchup seems close to unwinnable, right? If my opponent has any sort of reasonable draw, like we probably can't ever win. Seems very, very bad for us. 
Um, all right, see you next round. Okay, what are we doing here? So we're missing any mana source. I think we keep this. It's a slow hand, but we're missing two mana. Okay. Yeah, we are missing two mana for this, but we're missing only one for this. It's not a good draw. Certainly not a good draw. Speaking of blue white. One well, plans for a turn two kill. That's true. Well, my opponent's will probably play a force of negation deck, right? So probably don't just go for it. Seachrom Coast. So that's one of the two mana that I need. Not hitting a land drop is potentially game losing, however. I'm sure I agree. I've had many good matches for Gersus Sisters Belch after side but it's over. Yeah, yeah, I assume so, but you know, I am not good at playing the deck, right? <laughs> As I said at the very beginning, like the whole concept of this league is me trying to fumble through a league with Belcher. Uh, that's like the fun of it, you know? Now the question is if my opponent playing counter magic or not. I could go for Ritual into Feet into Belcher. Well, I can recross and put a Pact of Negation on top of my deck and do it next turn with counter backup. Right? So, why would I jam it when I can just do something much better, right? Oh, they counted the belch and I can't respond. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. We're not countering this. Okay. So, um, do I just bait here? Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a card that I can play here. Yeah, we can stack the deck now. This is a very interesting one. If my goal is to play around counter magic. Right? So obviously we're playing we're putting turn timber on top first. That's the easy one. And I think I want to go Blood Moon Blood Moon into draw seven. So we give ourselves like two shots at just like blood mooning them out of the game. I can also just like decline to reforge, right? I definitely want a Blood Moon then. So let's do Blood Moon. Because like we could just kill them straight up if we otherwise, right? So let's do Blood Moon. Pact of Negation? Let's Moon Moon Manamorphose Moon Moon Manamorphose Manamorphose
then reforge and I can do um, let's do smashing plunge ritual ritual That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, Belcher. Impact of negation, I guess. Keep the rest in any order. Put that on the bottom. Like we can, you know, we, we can see what the plan is here, right? So we're drawing two blood moons in a row, so my opponent's gonna need two counter spells in order to deal with that. And if they tap out, we just go for it and just kill them, right? So if they tap out on their turn, they just lose. Oh, we can be safe by... Okay. Reanimate. We are under, under some pressure now, but I'm still going to play around at least the first counter spell, right? Uh, we're not gonna be able to play around any other counter spell, I don't think, because now this is putting a ton of pressure on me. So I think we may have to go for it now. I think we may have to go for it now. Should have discarded the cross, by the way. The fairy also means that we, yeah, we just have to go for it now. We don't have another turn. So here goes nothing. Got it? Looks like they do. That's fine. Um, so Veil looks pretty solid. So many Veil of Summer matchups, geez. Uh, Blood Moon looks pretty strong, particularly on the play. Um, wanna cut a couple of those and don't think wanna cut the Pact altogether, but it's kind of awkward against the Fairy. Cut moon. I don't think I want to cut moon on the play, no. On the draw, I'm gonna cut it, yeah. But on the play, I think it's good enough. Like the threat of a turn two blood moon is very, very good against my opponent's uh, deck. Um I mean imagine they have they're gonna have some form of um discard spells. They always bring in Leyline. I don't think I care too much about Leyline. Could all the four mana Ritz? I, wanna, I don't think I want to cut them all. I think I want to leave the one because it just enables piles, right? It enables certain piles. I, I, I need, yeah, I, I need to leave one to enable some certain piles. Challenger doesn't do damage for Leyline. Why do you think there's a Pyromancer's Ascension in my deck? It's a very convoluted kill, but it's a way to it's a way to work things out. You ascension, you start to net some mana, and then you make a bunch of back to the Titan tokens and you haste them with Song Math Treachery. And you win that way. I think my last cut is gonna be What's my last cut gonna be? Second copy of Reforge? Probably not. Plunge. 
plunge? No. What's my last cut gonna be? Am I just supposed to cut this Pact of Negation? I kinda feel like that. Maybe that's wrong. It's possible that's wrong. Turn to Blood Moon. They have the Discord spell. It's pretty bad if they do. Yep. So they're probably going to get my Blood Moon here. They kind of have to, right? Particularly because they fetched Watery Grave. They either take the Moon or they take their Ritual. Maybe they take Recross, but if they take Recross, like it's kind of whatever, right? This is not how we're winning anyway. The Inquisition is pretty good for them here, though. They do take the Blood Moon. It's not a great draw. Okay. If they have Teferi, I lose, right? I cannot be the turn 3 Teferi. Yeah, my only way of killing the Teferi is smashing, right? So if they go up to 5, I'm never going to have enough mana. Right? Like, I'm, I'm going to cast the Recross here, almost regardless of what happens. You can't reforge with a Deferi in play. Why do you think that I'm saying that I can never beat a Deferi? If there's a Deferi, I cannot, um, I cannot cast off of uh, the thing. I can I cannot draw seven, right? So this is four, five, six. We don't have seven, we have six, right? Next turn, that is. So you're just saying like the fair recross? Is that what you're saying? Like I set up a reforce, I just hard cast the reforce the soul and they just win from there. Okay, so uh, turn timber on turn timber first. I guess then the reforge. And then we want to do. Veil. Ritual. Belcher. So um, I'm doing Veil, Ritual, Ritual, Belcher. What else? Another Ritual. That's five. I'm probably going to be able to use a land drop. Yeah, land. Ritual, ritual, belcher, land. Plunge, titan? Hmm. 
Yeah, right? Plunge Titan. And the last card, just make another ritual. And the rest doesn't matter. Play my land? Yes, I did. Okay, pass the turn. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> uh, well, um... So we know there's a Belcher on top, right? Do we just draw the Belcher? I kind of want to just draw the Belcher, honestly. I think we just draw the Belcher. Thought Scour U is kind of hilarious, actually. This card is so bad. <laughs> this card is so awfully bad. Even in that deck where which card you draw is just so, so important. And you're just hoping to high roll, uh, like putting a creature into your graveyard. That seems so bad to me. So there's the Volturino. We... I kind of want to set up a couple of veils on top of my deck. Let's recross them paths again. And now we have one, two, one, two, three, four, play ritual with veil backup. And I can play around another thought scour too, which is nice. Counter spell. Alright. That's gone. Sure. We about to inflict some Kahira pain. Kahira clocking the Teferi. Oh, wait, what? They tap like this? Why would they tap like this? For Drown? Okay. I mean, I can just play this, right? And that just pressures the, the Teferi? So this pressure's there. I guess they have like a variety of things that they could have, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a death card. Attack you. They're gonna instant speed Archon with counter backup? Well, that's fucked up. I can't really beat that, can I?
There's nothing they can have for blue blue, so I'm just gonna do this. Because we know that we're not drawing a veil, right? We're drawing the fucking the token maker. All right, cool. Yeah, all of these games, I feel like Sodek could have been able to win. You know, like all of these matches that I, I we have played, I feel like Sodek would have at least been able to win one of those three matches that we lost. Um, but it's cool. Like this deck is a lot more intricate than I than I originally gave it credit for. Oh, it's pretty neat. All right, see you next round. All right, where are my buys? I want to see some buys. Oh man, playing this Lurus. Lurus is not a buy. Hmm. All three of my land center tapped. I can go turn one. Turn two. And we can potentially high roll the turn three kill. Gonna keep this. I reckon it's good to keep. So I should lead on song map treachery then. We're definitely going Balagate on two. All right. You know what? I, I just don't want to play this deck anymore. <laughs> I don't want to play against this card, okay? I don't want to play against this card anymore. Oh! Oh! You're dead. You're dead, monkey. You're fucking dead. We also exile it. Value. And I did it main phase because my opponent could be could have been playing um, counter magic. Now we know that they're playing black red. So. Uh, so we can ritual into recross. Just double recross. Oh, double um, double thing you say? Okay, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. So let's do that. Green, red. Um, recross the paths. Always turn timber first. Then, oh, double reforge, you mean? Double reforge, yeah, yeah. So, reforge, reforge. Then we want to go smashing. Because we want to play out this Valakid Awakening. So we're going to have three mana. We want to go smashing. I can't metamorphose on their end step, I don't think. Um, what did I click on? Did I click on a Belcher? I have not clicked on a Belcher just yet. So we're gonna do... I just I just clicked on a Smashing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we have Smashing. I guess we have Recross. Um, sorry, they, they draw seven. Smashing. Then we want Belcher. Then we want... Ritual, ritual, iron crack feet, and whatever, right? Just, I guess, another ritual. So, Belcher, feet, ritual. 
ritual ritual another shadow school smashing i guess and whatever So we cross the path so we can get going again. Put that on the bottom. We play a land this turn. It's turn three. So unless my opponent is playing Field of Ruin or something, this should be locked up, I think. Whoever figured out the whole recross the paths thing, it's a freaking genius. Jorge Cruz, Samuel Miami, me viene la cabeza este caso con la habilidad. Sé que hasta no se resuelve entera, no tenía ninguna tierra, pero si por ejemplo yo tengo una dría de mesa, meto nueve tierras repitiendo habilidad, o sea, con... no, eh. Triggerían todas las que pusiste en, Solo triggerían las que pusiste en juego después de, de que sean 6. Solo triggerían esas. Todas las que pusiste antes de que tengas 6 en juego no hacen nada. Yes. Let's draw 7. Let's play this. Ritual, ritual, cast this, play this, Belgia. Todas las que vayan después de que entró la bala, exactamente. All right, what are we doing here? Uh, definitely the, uh, actually. Well, I guess we're cutting blood moons, right? So the ley lines can probably come in, and so do the veils. But my opponent, this opponent is not playing counter magic, so the iron crack feet now kind of is good. So I think the pact is gonna go. And uh, wanna make one more cut. Oh, we probably want claim for Pity Needle or something like that. Is there is there anything that could do that? Maybe Fury. Maybe we want at least one Fury in this matchup. If we cut moves, we can cut some number of strikes. Strike it rich. Uh, I mean, it's still ramp, right? Like, we need this. I don't know. Probably. Necromentia? I doubt that my opponent is playing Necromentia. You never see Necromentia out of those decks. But Pythian Needle could potentially be an issue. Probably not. Like, Damping Sphere, maybe? Damping Sphere is kind of a beating. So maybe we just put on the one of Claim. To play around potential uh, cyborg hate. Uh, could cut a land, maybe? That's probably wrong, but, you know, let's do it. Song is a good cut. Well, we need this to kill for we to kill with uh, with back to the Titan tokens. But I guess I, I guess it's two people saying that we can cut songs, so I guess that's the one that I'm gonna cut. All right, um, Leyline, Lands, Ritual, Belcher, keep. For Stout's having it. <laughs> You feel poorer. You do feel poorer, but do you feel better though? 
Magnus, that's so generous of you. And I feel like people who are not dead inside, but donate to to me, donate BDs to me specifically, uh, even you know after doing that stuff, um, they're also their quality of life improved significantly as well. Well, I think this nature claim's going. Iron clock feet. You know what? Sure, why not? Right? Just throw that in there. We could put a Belcher in play and then activate it next turn if we draw any land, but the issue with doing that, if my opponent has K command, we're actually, you know, not looking great. So. <laughs> All right, opponent. Now I can't afford Renan instead of being dead <laughs> on the inside of it on toes from Frostbite in Canadian winter. Um, I mean, it, it's been proven too that that is because uh, because of, uh, you know, Canada is not a real place. So because Canada is not a real place, uh, you can, you know, get, get frozen to death in there. So this is actually the right play, by the way. They're just trying to put stuff into the graveyard to, to get Croxa back. So uh, definitely the correct line there. Um, next turn, they're going to be able to put Lurus in hand, play a tap land, and then following turn, they can lure us into Croxa. So we actually do not have infinite time. <sighs> do we want to cycle one of these, is the question. Well, I think this isn't doing anything, so I'm just going to wait until my opponent plays a black spell, and I'm going to Morphos into cycle here. Although there's the possibility... No rebuy Lurus, huh? Okay. Well. Well, I'm gonna cycle one of these. Well. <laughs> gonna cycle another one of these. Oh, is yes. Red and green. Let those paths be recrossing. Is recrossing what you're supposed to say there? Recrossed. Uh, we're just gonna reforge again, I guess. I guess that's. It's bad against Surgical. Does that matter? Like, do I have do I have faith that my opponent's got Surgical Extraction in their deck? Well, I have to discard the Belcher to the Reforge. Oh, I guess that this surgical virtue and I still win with the an active power mass edition. Yeah, it's it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like this is just fine. This is just fine. Never mind. Um, so, um, turn timber first, then uh, reforge, reforge to play our own dashed monkey. Then um, we're gonna do a ritual. This enables the ascension because there's already a ritual in the graveyard. There's ritual, belcher, and then this ritual is so going to net infinite mana. Oh, but I need plunge into pact in order to get going. So it's going to be plunge first. Oh no, we can't plunge actually. We can't plunge. Because if my opponent finds any removal spell for the Titan, we lose. If they, for whatever reason, have any removal spell left in their deck that would allow them to, to, uh, to kill our Titan, we actually just lose. So plunge doesn't do it. 
So I guess we're gonna go. We're gonna go smashing, turn timber. Ritual. Ritual, I guess. And we can't win this turn. We're gonna have to win on the following turn. Which I'm not super stoked about. It seems unlikely that my opponent can kill me, but. Morphos. Balaged. Morphos. Balaged. Spike Field Hazard. Stuff at random. Put down at the bottom. You cast it with Soul No, because I have if I do that, then I have to cast it on upkeep. And like you're missing the point. Like the pact is in my hand. It's gonna get discarded. Right? It's gonna get discarded, so that's the problem. I know that they can't report, but the fact that I'm doing this in my upkeep means that I can't use it. I can't use the mana because it's gonna go away. So what I could do is I could just not draw seven, but I think I'm gonna. Yeah, we can't win here because we drew the Pact of the Titan, unfortunately. So let's go play this step and say go. I can win next turn. I didn't have enough lands in play in order to win this turn. I mean, again, I could have. I packed the I packed off the Titan, but then I die on my upkeep. Shadow's ball. Like, yes, I have one mana. What do I do with that one mana? I can't cast this because I don't have a creature to sacrifice to this. Can put the pack trigger on the stack. And then what? This is not a trigger. Like, you just play this, right? Interesting play there, okay. Put a counter on the ascension. Cast this. Always yes, always yield. Make a bunch of mana. Always yes, always yield. Make a bunch of mana. Um, I mean, I could go for the Balaget thingy, which is kind of cute. Do we want to do that just for funsies? All right, I'm just gonna go for the Balagate kill just because it's more fun. So, Balagate recovery. Oh, I can't actually because of the Void Walker. It's pretty funny. All right. The second copy is going to kill that one, sure, whatever, doesn't matter. Recovery, Morphos. And the second copy is going to get another Metamorphos.
then we morphose into red, green, red, green. And I'm just doing this mostly so I can showcase how this skill actually works. And that's the that's the only reason why I'm doing this. So I can showcase how this how this becomes a, a way to kill uh, by using get recovery. Second copy is gonna get desperate ritual. So as you can see, it's a lot of clicks. <laughs> it's a lot of clicks, but it does actually go infinite here. It does actually go infinite. So cast that. Each loop nets three mana. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we killing them? Uh, because uh, it's better value to do this, you know. This is the most stupid kill out of any deck that I've ever seen, I think. <laughs> this is pretty hilarious. Like, the amount of clicks that this requires... <laughs> Honestly, I kind of love this. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of love the fact that you can kill like this. <laughs> what about the sound of silence kill? That's a pretty good kill as well, I'm not gonna lie. I love how my opponent is just like, yeah, you. Anybody's game. <laughs> this is anybody's game, chat. Don't worry about it. Close game. Close game. <laughs> um, so get back spike field hazard. Get back recovery and spike field hazard. I love how many loops I just went through and I achieved eight damage. Okay, I think we have showcased the kill now. I think I have shown how this works. So I'm just gonna belch them now, you know? So we can move on to so that we can move on to the next game. But hopefully this has shown how, how this kills now and you can reliably go, you know, tell your favorite, you know, uh, your favorite, uh, I don't know, whatever. I don't even know where I'm going with this conversation. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, so don't worry about it. Please continue. Um, I mean, I kind of have to continue a little bit. Mostly for value. Okay, now I'm gonna kill them. After all of this, I am going to finally kill them. Minus 13. Sweet. See you next round. Here we are for the last round. Opponent moves to 6. This hand has significant amount of mana. 
Nothing to do with it though. Are we keeping this? We do have the awakening, so we can like recycle this hand. I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, let's just yeah, let's keep this. It's fine. What is this? Gemstone mine. All right. That's a back of negation. Which, oddly enough, we can actually pay for if we wanted to. Is this Dredge? Dredge? Is that you? <laughs> it's even more mana. Um, play that tapped and say go. I think we're going to recycle my hand on end step. Chimstone Mine Spiral Bluff Canal. Oh. Well. I mean, we're doing that, right? We're not not doing that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're not not doing that, so uh, let's do that. Um, cool. Awesome. So, my opponent went turn one gemstone mine, turn two spar bluff canal, do nothing else for the rest of the game. I have to assume that they are on dredge. I cannot think of any other deck that would have those... that would have those... Um, those two lands in the same deck. So that being the case, we're on the draw against the dredge. I think I don't want Blood Moons. Which probably means that these Ley Lines are free. And we can put on a Nature's Claim in case my opponent has... I don't even know what they could have. Go with that. I love how this deck doesn't even have any graveyard hate. It's like, yeah, we're, we're not about that life. We're not trying to stop our opponents from winning. We're just starting to win ourselves. So, what is this? So, this is a dead card. This is virtually a dead card as well. So, is this a keep? is the question that I'm asking here. <laughs> Your form splashing red for through the reach. That's what it is. Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> I kind of want to shape this hand. This feels like a mulligan to five. The thing is, this feels like a mulligan to five that I would keep. Like, if, if we had this five-card hand, I think I would keep it. Let's mulligan. This seems better. So, we have these cards. Because I think I'm going to put this back. Either one of these is a defensible thing to put back. I think I'm going to put back the Reforged Soul. Play that tap, say go. What a sick read, huh? Nope. It is indeed a dredge. Some pretty solid dredgers there. 
Pretty nice the conflagrate doesn't do anything whatsoever. Um Say no to that. Chubby hamster, think of that follow. They can ox here. That's a lot of pressure. Ox sure is a lot of pressure. What creature do we have for Infernal Plunge? Uh, we have Pact of the Titan. Pact of the Titan is our creature of choice. I think we may just be dead next turn. We have been successfully raced, I think. Is there anything we can draw here? Uh, we can metamorphose into ritual, into iron crack feet, and we win. Ritual? Feet? Not quite. Not quite! Um... So they basically did not cyborg at all, right? One Piety Needle. Very good to know about that. One Piety Needle is very good to know about. Uh, we are we don't have outs here, but you know, may as well just do that. And I think my opponent's board state may be lethal. I'm not sure. I didn't do the math, but I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Um Force just seems better than Pact of Negation, now that we saw the Pine Needle. Is there any way to eliminate Modern in turn 1 on the plate? No. There's no way. The only way would be Gemstone Caverns. I mean, yeah, I guess technically you could play Memnite into Infernal Plunge into Blood Moon. So, like, you could do that, but there's not, like, a good way to do that. We'll buy out Infernal Plunge. All right, good luck with that, Mr. Lee. I respect your crusade. Um, this is not a good hand, right? The No Lander. Bottom, bottom. Man, these hands are absolute garbage, right? These hands just don't do anything. This is a four card hand. We'd rather have a land or a ritual. I think I'd rather have a land than the metamorphose. This is not looking good, folks. This is not looking good. Um, think of the follow for 20. The God of Pizza. The God of Pizza coming and hanging out in my humble channel. How could I be worthy? Sadness. <laughs> I 
Well, I mean, we can beat that. Uh, am I alone in here? I think I'm so down on, on resources that I'm supposed to yellow here, right? Ugh. Ugh. Here's a humble badger. Please don't have ancient grudge. I mean, we have two forces and I guess one force and nature's claim. And as soon as we would draw either one of those, we win. It's a claim. Um, green, red. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Would you look at that? <laughs> Play well, get rewarded. Let's go. Three and two. Um, three and two, you love to see it. Uh, all right, so about this deck, this is this is not my wheelhouse. <laughs> this is this is not my wheelhouse nor my millhouse. Um, uh, this deck's just weird, man. You have like the easy oh here, here I go, here's my turn to kill, and then you have like this. Stupid recross the path kills, which are so convoluted. Like you have infinite, I guess like any deck that allows you to stack your entire deck is probably gonna be um, gonna be bound to be insanely complicated, like Doomsday and Legacy and stuff like that. Uh, but like this recross the path kills are an absolute pain in the ass. Like such like brain twisters so i assume that if you want to play this deck going in cold like i did is not the best idea <laughs> because you want to shortcut uh the kind of the kind of piles that you can put together it's the same as with amulet right like whenever you have a complicated turn just uh, memorizing certain shortcuts like you know if i have if i have an asusa and an amulet and a bounce land like you know that's plus one mana but if i have two two amulets that's plus nine mana like all of those shortcuts uh, they are super uh, important for you to memorize because uh, this is going to be um, kind of a complicated affair otherwise so knowing, you know, okay, how do I do to play around a monkey attack? How do I do to play around discard spell? How do I do to play around counter magic? Like all of those things are, are pretty important to kind of figure out before you even try to play this in a competitive setting. Is it powerful? Yes, it's powerful. It's definitely, definitely pretty powerful, but um, it's definitely not my cup of tea though. <laughs> like I would, I would definitely not play this deck. It just, it fights on an axis that I'm just not um, comfortable fighting on. Uh, but it's it's cool. It was fun. It was fun trying to figure out the puzzle. It was fun trying to figure out the puzzle. Uh, we went two and three in the league. I assume that if uh, an experienced player would have played, would have gone either three and two or four and one, um, because I think that at least uh, a couple of the games that I lost was uh, was a loss due to inexperience. And if I had played around like what actually ended up happening, particularly match number one with my opponent playing that bug mid range Shadowless Agent deck. Um, that match definitely looked like um, it could have been won with some tighter play and just like knowing how to play around stuff more than anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, deck is definitely interesting and it's wilder and crazier than I could have ever expected. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.